So what we have here is the all new 2022 MG HS and I was expecting a red one like all MGs at the moment. However, this bright and blue color looks absolutely stunning. I mean, this is the first time I saw a blue one as well. And before I continue with the review, I would also like to congratulate James Deakin. He was actually here last Monday for his new MG HS, MG Philippines sponsor naman, joke. <laughs> so what we have here now is MG's largest SUV at the moment. This is a compact SUV, so it competes with the likes of the Ford Territory, Geely Azcara, and Chai Tigo 7 Pro, if you want to add that. And also, this is only a 5-seater model, so no word yet if the MG RX-8 slash Gloucester will arrive here yet in the Philippines. But it's good to know that MG are ramping up their game with this all-new MG HS. So, typical MG design here, you have the star dust grill here and the large MG badge here. There's a lot of chrome here and there, however, I forgive it. And also, I love the LED sequential lights here. And they're all LED for this trophy variant. There are two variants, by the way, for this MG HS. An Alpha variant and this trophy variant. But, suggestion for future buyers, get the MG HS trophy instead this one. There's only like a, a 50k difference between both variants. So, I highly recommend this skid plate here. Ground cleans, I think it's around... 200 millimeters so it's probably also one of the highest in its class there are fake vents here and there but it's just only a minimal amount so it is fine for me and then side profile as well you have led turn uh, signal lights as well and then the cladding here just the right amount there's also a chrome bit as well here and also nice uh, lines here in the hood and on the side profile the roof rails though i'm not sure if they serve a purpose just being honest but it gives it a nice touch and then also you have chrome on the window kink and as well on top of the door and below as well. There's a chrome all around for this MGHS. However, as I said earlier, it does suit this Brighton blue color. That's actually also the first time I've seen one as well. What's nice with this MGHS in the rear, there are real exhausts. They kind of give like Bentley, Bentayga vibes. And the rear taillights, don't they give a little bit of bmw mercedes-esque look so it does give it like a euro look i love that this has a power tailgate by the way with all the seats up you have 463 liters of space and then with all the seats down you have 1287 liters of space so it's on par with the competition in terms of boot space and also there's a light on the left side and there's a cubby space only on the right side and then there's no load lip whatsoever in the new mghs and then you have underfloor storage along with a space saver spare tires and then yes that's also what i like with the the, uh, boot space with this MGHS. The floor is absolutely flat. The power tailgate has an anti trap feature. So if you notice uh, from Kako's review in Auto Deal, he got mushed because he have to apply some force for it to activate, which is a weird thing. But good to know there is still is. So yeah, that's about it with the exterior. I love this bright and blue color. I might consider this color now instead of the red one. So without it, I'll show you the interior. It works. <laughs> so here in the interior of the all-new MG HS, best door thud of any MG so far. And also, what's nice with this MG HS now, this is probably also the best quality I've seen in an MG so far. Fit and finish here is amazing. You have soft touch everywhere on top of the dashboard as well here in the door. Few plastics here and there. Like as per usual on the door cards, cubby space and your bottle holder should be. My water jug just fixed. Silver trim, window switches here. And also I love this material here. They're all leather. And there's also like a pinkish stitching as well on the door. I mean it's red but it's a little bit pink in my eyes only. And also you have silver trim door handles. Love the air conditioning vents. Yes, it's gloss black however, they're airplane style so... It looks premium as well. And surprisingly here on the left side, there's only for your auto leveling headlamps. The rest of the controls, like for your cruise control, there is actually an additional stock here on the left side. But at least it gives a clean look. And then steering wheel here, it's hard, it's girthy, but still nice to the touch. It's leather, but it's more on the durable side of things. And then there's also paddle shifters. I cannot wait to try this out. Like every other MG, you're volume controls are here on the left side of the steering wheel and then adjustments for the infotainment on the right side however with this MGHS now there is a super sport button I tried that already 
this thing is somewhat crazy and then here in the center console I love the materials still here there's also a trophy badge there on the right side just beside the air conditioning vent and then glove box okay it's decent however there's just the space for the manual and then here in the middle there's gloss back air conditioning vents there's gloss block here and there however it is kept to the minimum and I also love the silver star stop button it's more angled than usual and then here in the center console you have buttons for your climate control and then below that you have a chrome finish here silver team finish and then there also a silver team cover then it reveals a two usb ports and then one 12 volt socket and then also like most of the mg suvs there's still that mg embossment here in the gear lever the hazard button is here on the left side than usually here in the middle of the center console but despite being top of the line variant there is still blank buttons everywhere but i forgive it that also goes for the right side there's two of them now but there's the button at least for your power tailgate function and then here more buttons here in the middle for your auto hold function electronic parking brake and then heel descent control and then more stuff here now with this gloss back material there's a cover here that reveals a cup holder area there's also a plastic divider here so no matter what size any will definitely fit in here and there's also space for your phone here and then also I'll demo this in the infotainment just a bit there's also a health air filter here so what that does so example the sunroof is open so it absorbs all the pollution in so that's actually a very nice feature with this MGHS that's also a very important feature in this day and age now we're still in the middle of a pandemic and then open that you have a central glove box and there's also a cooling function there inside so, however you only can fit somewhat smaller water jugs and smaller cups inside but it's fine and then seats here are amazing there's somewhat as more on the sportier side and also love the red trophy badge as well here and there's also like a suede alcantara like leather seats here there's also one more here in the middle somewhat similar to a chevrolet but this one's alcantara suede whatever <laughs> and also space in the back feet room knee room and headroom is amazing despite the panoramic sunroof however taller people might tend to struggle a little bit however sitting in a middle it's a little bit elevated but no issues whatsoever with the headroom and then the transmission tunnel it's a little bit wide but it's only shallow you can just simply put your feet up it is fine and then as well you have a central armrest with a leather strap as well and there's also cubby space i assume for your phones so yeah that's a little thing about it here in the interior of the mghs there are also lights on each side of the grab handles and then visors you still have vanity mirror it's not working though because this car is low but but the visors are sick itself so it's still nice so that's about here in the mghs i'll show you the infotainment system So the 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster is a little bit laggy but it still gets the job done. I mean, okay the opening sequence is a little bit laggy however for this part, I mean it's responsive now. Just this little bit of a delay and then there are driving modes here. We're actually just below the hazard button. I'm surprised you still have sport mode despite having the super sport button. And yeah there's custom mode as well here. And also what I like, you can see it in the 10 inch infotainment system as well, when you change diving modes. Right, that's custom, eco, normal. And watch when I press super sport. So it becomes even redder now. And also what I notice, if you deactivate super sport mode, it will go back to the last driving mode you were in. So I was in sport mode. And then here in the infotainment system, sim very similar like all the MGs. A bit similar with the MG ZST now. There's a lot more controls here and there. And there's a lot more you can play in here now. And also wait, for that air filter, I'll go back there. And then this is for your air conditioning controls. And then this is the air cleaner I'm talking about. And all the windows of is up for now. And then oh, where's that not working? Ah there, now it's on. You can deactivate it if you want. And then watch when I open the window. I know that's supposed to work. You see this moves so it detects there's more pollution coming in. So this air filter now will absorb them even more now. 
And also like the GST, now you can get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto now as you can see. There's the ambient lighting, you can change whatever color you want. So I'm gonna leave it in red or I just won't touch it, play with it anymore. So there's a lot to talk about with the driving of this MGHS. Before that, I'll show you the engine. Oh, they're gas struts. Nice. So this is the engine of the all-new MGHS. It's a one and a half liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that produces 169 horsepower, nice, and 250 newton meters of torque. So those are really powerful figures already. I think it's just on par with the Ascara. And like the Agili Ascara, this is mated to a seven-speed TST. Uh, transmission it's basically a dual clutch transmission and as you saw earlier there's paddle shifters there is a tiptronic function so yeah i cannot wait on this how this drives i can't wait to show you all especially in super sport mode so with that it let's go for a drive so driving the all-new 2022 mghs before we uh, do a full drive impression i just want to show you guys something this was going up the car park here in promenade promenade whatever here in green hills i noticed something okay let me just go up I, this is this applies for all modes just going up right okay i will just stop right it just limps just ever so slightly so there is kind of like a bit of a a bit of jerkiness with the transmission just uphill but it is not too bad i'll be very very honest i really didn't like the transmission of the mg6 however this is way way better tuned than that and just driving it here to the car park for now i did notice the suspension is just a little bit firm but it does give it a sporty drive let's do a demo for the hill descent control since i'm here already ah there hill descent control is active so it's steady at seven kilometers per hour only okay that's really nice and actually you can hear the brakes ever so slightly which is a little bit weird maybe it's the first test ever day it's still cold however good to know the hill descent control works flawlessly so here i'm gonna drive now the mghs for real i filmed this already in the sm all of asia concert grounds that was supposed to be my 10th and last review of the day however i didn't like the output of the video because it seemed like i was rushing a lot and it was so hot but thank you again to sir Net bert and mg green hills for making me review again this mghs at least i have more seat time and there i can talk a lot more and also thank god i wanted to reshoot this because of this bright and blue color so back to the review uh diving modes there is a lot of differences with the steering wheel so eco mode here as you can see it is very very light but put it to sport and super sport mode that steering tends to weigh up a lot more being a bit heavier now there is very good uh, feel with it in terms of the handling so it gives it like a more sportier uh, driving experience kind of a little bit similar with the Gilead Scara not as good however I can say this is second best already and also the price of this 1,258,888 pesos they really love their eights don't they it is way more affordable than the Ascara mild hybrid so I see why this is getting popular so fast I mean I've seen few already on the road and I know a lot of people as well bought during the test drive event at MOA and then let's try normal mode okay eco and is of course delayed however it's fine it does it does serve the purpose normal mode of course the best balance between eco and sport mode as well as super sport mode however it's just a little bit of a day but once you get going it's really really surprising this uh, mghs but let's go to super sport mode immediately when the road clears up and also nvh of this is excellent there's also not that much tire noise unlike the zst if, if i recall only and then here just slow speeds okay it is responsive enough in normal mode this dual uh, clutch transmission for this mghs it's not as jerky as the mg6 anywhere thank goodness and also this is the weird thing you cannot engage oh 
Okay, it will automatically upshift by the way. Okay, you can use the paddle shift if you're in sport and super sport mode only. This won't do anything if you're in eco and normal mode only. Ah, you have to disengage for super sport mode. Okay, that's weird. Okay, let's try super sport mode now. Wow. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera when you shift up. <laughs> you tend to lurch forward when you change up. <laughs> okay, this dual class. It's not the fastest of its kind, however, it is plenty fast enough. Wow, this is this is great to drive, I must say. And yes, the sting for me is way better in sport super sport mode for obvious reasons. And then yeah, let's try eco mode. So you let's have a fair chance with this. Oh, we have to deactivate this first. This is a little bit confusing, but you'll get used to it. Okay, come on, I floored it right. There's a little bit delay, but oh wow. And over rough patches of road, it is amazing. It soaks up the bumps pretty well. Yes, the suspension may be a little bit firm only. However, it's still no means an uncomfortable car. Actually, it is really, really comfortable. Even the suspension tuning of this, I must say, there is good balance between a comfortable ride and a sporty ride. I, I really like this MGHS now. Yes, despite being front wheel drive only, it is still sporty enough to drive. Okay, and then let's try normal mode now. Okay, just a little bit delay, but response a little bit better. Okay, and then let's try sport mode from a standstill. Okay, just just a little bit of delay with the switch, but once you get going, wow, wow, it will hang on the gears way way longer in the sportiest modes. Okay, but I do like super sport. It transforms this car even more, even more than sport mode. This is crazy. And also, from my experience only, Super Sports, the steering wheel just firms up even more than in Sport mode. Let's floor it. <laughs> I love when you slurge forward just like that. Wow, you get to high speeds really, really fast. And the gearbox shifts on my command. Wow. Okay. Just deactivate that. Let's just chill put in eco mode oh so there's another mode i almost forgot to tell there's a custom mode so you can play with this if you want to stay in super sport mode or sport mode only and then the transmission eco mode there there's that custom mode. that's what i like as well but let's leave in normal mode it's, it's, this is the best mode for daily use if you're not flowing it like me and yeah what can i say about the transmission yes it is a bit weird at times only however it is really really good it is way better, I keep saying it, than the MG6 and I assume as well as the better than its predecessor, the MG RX5. Okay, this is not the sportiest to drive in its class, however, for the price point, it is really sporty enough. I mean, James Deacon has one now, I can't believe that. He chose the MG HS over its competition, I must say. Yeah, the driving dynamics is really excellent with this MG HS. And also, if you can hear, I'm not sure if you can hear that on camera, I love the transmission shifting up by itself. You can hear like a very small thud only with the dual clutch. And yes, being a dual clutch, driving it way more now, it is not jerky as I once hoped, thank goodness. And you can notice it here and there only, but just proper throttle input will be very, very fine. Maneuverability and visibility is excellent. The D-pillar just... The C and D pair is just a little bit big, however, there's the reverse camera as well. Oh yeah, the reverse camera is very similar with the MG ZST. May not be the best, however, it's still good to have. I forgive it. One thing I noticed with this MG HS though, I'm 5'4", I'm a small person. Even though my seat's all the way down, the rear view mirror stock is slightly lower than usual. So, kind of like the GREIs, this will just watch out for that handling of this is great it's even better than the Ford Territory and Cherry Tigo 7 Pro I must say Gilly Escaro yes that will be number one but this comes at a close second place however I might prefer this than the Gilly Escaro just because of the price it is way way more affordable and better value than the Gilly Escaro 
Okay, this is only with my diving. As you saw, I've been flooring it most of the time. I've been averaging what 5.3, 5.6 kilometers per liter only here around the city. However, you can get better fuel economy if you're diving it not heavy footed like me though. And here at a stop, normal mode. There. I remember the MG6 just wants to lurch forward like this. I really didn't like that diving experience. This is way better tuned. Yeah, so that's all I have to say now with this new MGHS. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> this is great. Probably be the new dark horse of the compact SUV. So I would like to thank Sir Nelbert and MG Green Hills for allowing me to reshoot this MGHS. What an honor. This kind of taking all the boxes as well for me. I really like this thing now. So that concludes my review of the all new MGHS. Hopefully more MG, MG reviews coming up really soon. So hope you guys like and subscribe. And I will see you with more future car reviews. Bye bye.